Hey guys, welcome to the third episode of Zettelcast and Examples. Um, in this post, I'll be reading the article, When Should You Start a New Note? Hopefully this process can give you ideas about how to improve your Zettelcasting workflow. Uh, anyways, let's get right into it. So, when should you start a new note? So this article um, really explores like the workflow of how we should start notes. And the first point I write, um, sometimes it's difficult um, to create a note or to decide whether or not to create a note or append an existing note. And that can stop note taking entirely because there is cost in starting activity. The most important thing is just to start writing and worry about organization second. Yeah, so how, how I feel about this is that um, like there's a lot of cost in note taking, um, like immediately getting like just like reading the title itself. I noticed that, um, or I just know from personal experience that like it's more important to write the note um, uh, and then worry about organization afterwards uh, than to just like consistently, con incessantly worry about organization and not even write the note at all, uh, which is what I'm trying to say. Um, Okay, so for my next point, uh, as I'm reading this, all right, I write, probably one of the most important things about Zettelkasten is that you're always in search for related or already existing nodes uh, because reusing components is more efficient. Um, yeah, so how I feel about this is that um, this system, like rather than finding a... Uh, a like category or like folder to put it in or tag to add to it we're trying to find an existing note that already exists and then connect it to it um yeah and it's just like a totally different paradigm of uh note taking and it can be it can be a little bit confusing at the beginning um yeah so my next point is expanding a new note can be dangerous because it might take the atomistic city out of note making uh making it harder to reuse the component and then i write reusing components is more efficient uh so it's better to keep notes smaller and contain um yeah so i think they even mention it in this uh, blog post as well um yeah expanding expanding notes is a little bit dangerous because you lose that like the ability to retrieve the information out of the note quickly and that's very important especially if you want to keep the note uh, contained for like a specific topic uh, yeah and then and then once you do that like the whole system breaks down because you have these really large notes that you have to always like sift through and the things start becoming slower um, and then you can't take advantage of those connections that we use uh, yeah actually uh, yeah, and then for my next point, uh, notes are too big when info retrieval is slow. So like like I said before, um, big notes make it harder to retrieve like information faster. So, and also they make it so that like information is vague. Like it's hard to be able to know to reference something because like it covers so much breadth of of topic. Uh, it's not very specific to one thing. Um, yeah, and the next point, the process of taking notes with Zettelkasten is organic. Uh, the types of connections you make change and adapt as you develop better systems of connecting things. It reminds me of the brain, and then I link the brain has an organic structure. So, yeah, like, Zettelkasten is not, like, a is like an organic structure like they're the way that you connect things can change as you like develop a better system more personalized to yourself and that's what's so great about this like you don't have to stick to one way of doing things uh, you can adapt it as you go like let's say like you're going into like a learning like a new ca subject or something like you might have more value making different connections there as opposed to something more personal. And yeah, and then those would still work together. Just as long as you're making connections, uh, everything will still like uh, work seamlessly together. And that's like unlike 
how when we make like different folders for different things and we want to change things, it's a lot of overhead to do that. And my next point, best not to overthink things or else you lose speed and pro productivity. Uh, starting is always better than not doing anything. So yeah, this goes back to my first point. So it's great that they mentioned this in this article, like, because right as I was reading this, I'm, I'm like, this is what I'm thinking about. And then when they bring it up at the end, it just like goes to show like, oh, maybe like what I was thinking about was, was like, oh, like, right. <laughs> um, or at least in agreement with the author. So yeah, I do think that uh, there, we shouldn't be overthinking things. And if we do overthink things, we, we end up losing like speed, like we're just lot, we're just like stuck, not able to do anything. And yeah, so their final point, uh, they said, oh, there's like no universal guideline doing things. You just personalize things for yourself. I, I felt that that was just like an important concept that I wanted to note down. Uh, so I just wrote it down. Like most things don't have a universal guideline. It's more about understanding your use case and how you can adapt a solution for it. Um, and yeah, that's all my notes. Uh, thank you for listening and hope this has been helpful.